most of the prospects that end up on the transfer portal spotlight are proven commodities and you know are highly sought after. Today we're going a different route. We're talking about a 6'5 guard with excellent size and some good underlying ability, but hasn't really put it together on the college level yet. So let's talk about you know this guard and why he might be a really good fit for a high-level college program. Hello, welcome back to another Transfer Portal Spotlight. Today we're going to be doing a little bit different of a style here. So we're going to be talking Freddie DeLeone uh, out of Tennessee. So he spent one year there, you know, didn't like the playing time he was getting, put his name into the portal. And there's a lot to unpack here. So, you know, normally I would start one of these videos off by saying, let's look at the season he had at Tennessee last year. And, you know, transparently, I think the guy had like 12 buckets and, and you're about to see all of those. So I think, you know, it's probably best before we get into who he is as a player, let's just talk about the, the very, you know, small amount of stuff that he put on tape last year at Tennessee. So we'll get into those clips now. Again, I'm going to preface this by saying there is, you know, certainly not much to take as truth from this, these highlights of his time at Tennessee. He played limited minutes, had limited opportunity, uh, but there are some things that, you know, might give you some insights into him as a player and into him as his mentality as well. Uh, on a lot of these clips, you know, he is not doing things that you see end of bench guys do sometimes, like jacking up crazy shots or, you know, just trying to, to slack on defense. I mean, he, a lot of the opportunities he get he got from Tennessee last year were because he was playing hard-nosed defense. He was, you know, getting in passing lanes. He was getting steals. He's running the floor hard. And, you know, you don't, you don't see it on a lot of the back end of these offensive clips. But he's still moving without the ball. He's running the offense. He's, he's not just going into ISO mode every time. Uh, so I think, you know, there's some positives. He definitely flashes some athletically. Like you can see, you know, he has some athleticism to his game. Um, so it's not like he completely looked out of place. And when someone's coming off the end of a bench and has a pedigree, I think that's, you know, at least what you want to see in that regard. Transparently, I don't think there's a lot of value to be had uh, from watching those clips. I think you can see some of the things that pop. You know, we talked about some of the stuff that we did like and the the limited exposure uh, that he put out there last year. But that really begs the question, you know, what do, you know, scouts like or what? why are, co why are colleges interested in Freddie? And let's talk about that a little bit. So we're going to pull up some stats here and just look at, you know, some things that are intriguing about him. So, you know, he's a bigger guard, 6'5", you know, 185 pounds, uh, for his high school stats did you know speak pretty well for himself, so was able to to knock down some jump shots. Was highly recruited out of high school. Was a top thirty national recruit by many services, and you know honestly, he brought a lot to the table. Um, you know, so we'll kind of move now, and we're going to shift gears, and let's just look at some film that shows why was he sought after in the first place, and the the first thing to look at is, you know, he made some really tough shots. He made a living in high school, in, in prep school, shooting difficult shots. So, you know, I put together uh, some film that I could find just that highlighted his ability to shoot the ball in high school. And, and luckily, these were from some games against high-level competition. So let's go ahead and get into that now. This section of, of, you know, his highlight reel from his career is what gets you excited about him as a prospect and, and how he's going to impact you positively as a program. So, you know, I'll just give us some preface here. Where you pull his stats from, you, when you go back to high school, not every game is in there. Typically, it's only, again, you know, the games that they played against other prospects, games that were readily available on different streaming platforms. And his shot, you know, selection is odd. Like he shot a ton of just off the dribble, pull up jump shots that are difficult. Like they rank in the you know, top quarter of all, you know, difficulty level shots. And he made a respectable percentage of them. He impacted games doing that. So that's got to give you some hope as a coach. You're like, wow, if he can, if he can do this and be a tough shot maker, what, you know, what else can he add to his game to, to keep that progressing, keep it growing and diversify his offensive skill set. Now, there are some red flags as well. You know, I'm going to be, you know, fully honest here. He, you know, shot a very low percentage on unguarded attempts. He shot a low percentage on catch and shoot attempts. He didn't get a lot of those. And also against these games against, you know, higher level competition, he didn't get to the rim all that much. 
We're going to talk about that part later. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, like if he can make tough shots consistently and, and, and be the athletic player that he is, it's, you know, still something that provides a, a big net positive to a program. Lastly, in high school, he did flash some pretty solid athleticism and ability to get to the rim. He didn't do it a crazy amount. Like he wasn't a guy who was making a living at the rim and getting there, you know, multiple times a game. But when he did, he flashed, you know, he showed that he can do this in a, in a you know, more repeatable uh, setting. Now he just didn't, he just didn't do it all that often. So, you know, I want to show you just a few instances and, and some of the athleticism that pops when we talk about a scouting perspective and looking at guys and, and how we would project them to continue growing throughout their career. So with that in mind, let's just take a look at some of the plays that, you know, kind of pop off of tape from high school that show his athletic prowess and, and maybe where he can get his game to. Now, it doesn't seem like he got to the rim all that much for his higher level competition, but when he did, he flashed. Like, you know, when you look at him being able to drive the lane, rise up off one or two feet and, and finish with a dunk, like that's that's good. That's things you'd want to see from a big guard who can get down the court in a hurry. Uh, you want to see him be able to finish at the rim. Now, percentages bared out at the rim. He was good. I think you would just ultimately would have liked to have seen a few more attempts from that part of his game. So that's really it on Freddie DeLeon. So he is, you know, an exciting prospect, somebody that you would look for as a long-term solution to some maybe talent gaps in a college program. Someone that you, you know, maybe get surprised by this year and they and they play well or they, you know, they play more than you expect them to. But I think whatever program he ends up at is going to be in an odd predicament of promising him playing time or promising him growth opportunities and then having to take that flyer and take that risk, uh, you know, to have him in those situations. So it's going to be very interesting. I think, you know, he's a piece that is a, is an ad for the right program. It, it just has to be the right situation, has to be the right opportunity to really help him maximize what he's trying to do. Again, just want to thank everybody for taking the time to watch this, hoping you learned a little bit more about Freddie. Uh, about the type of prospect he is in the transfer portal. If you did like this, if you did see value, please uh, you know, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I, you know, I say this every video, but it genuinely helps me out. Uh, you know, it helps it reach more people, helps get some exposure to what we're trying to do here. But I just appreciate everyone tuning in and I'll catch you next time.